I would say it is not the happiest place on earth for these cast members, right? Uh, you know, while we respect the fact that Disneyland have built their brand, they built it on the back of these workers. And we feel that the workers should be compensated and they should be earning a part of what has been built because they have led the way in building what it, the Disneyland that we know today. They say it's the happiest place on earth, or so they would like you to believe. Disneyland workers, however, are singing a very different tune these days. Earlier this week, hundreds of Disneyland Resort employees in Anaheim, California, protested outside of the park, demanding higher wages and better treatment. The signs at the rally were kind of fun. One of them said, we'll get GTA 6 before our back pay. Another called it the stingiest place on earth. And one of the chants from the protest was, we make the magic, they make the money. And they do make the money. How much money? Well, last year, the Walt Disney Company made $88.9 billion in revenue, a 7.5 increase from the previous year. Disney CEO Bob Iger himself made $31.6 million in 2023, and that's actually less than he's made in previous years. In 2021, he made $46 million before retiring from the company. When he came out of retirement less than a year later, he immediately laid off 8,000 employees. In comparison, one employee, a mother of four, said that she only earns $2,800 a month from Disney, which isn't even enough to cover her California rent. And here is what another employee had to say about the criminally low wages. It's personal to me because last summer I worked, I, I was working here full time and I had other employment and I was still living in my car. I had to come into the resort to shower and use the restrooms here. And nobody should ever have to experience that working a full time job. Roughly 14,000 Disneyland employees working at every level of the business are represented by four unions. And those unions have been in negotiations with Disney since April. When those negotiations have not gotten anyone anywhere, the unions organized a Wednesday's rally. Prior to the protest, Disneyland was accused of anti-union behavior when it issued warnings to over 500 employees for wearing their union pins, saying that the pins were against the dress code. Union members are set to vote on whether or not to strike sometime today. And if and when they do, the unions will then set the terms for the strike. The video will continue in just a moment, but first I have a message for you. TYT needs your help. Membership is vital to survival. So please go to tyt.com team and become a member today. Here's what Disney had to say on everything. They said, with today's rally, we continue to be focused on the well-being of our guests and cast members. We remain committed to the upcoming meetings on July 22nd and 23rd and reaching an agreement with Master Services that focuses on what matters most to cast members, positions Disneyland Resort for growth and job creation, and enables us to continue delivering incredible guest experiences. If the strike goes through, it's likely that Disney will just try to find ways to make up its losses elsewhere. For example, during last year's Hollywood strikes, which resulted in low box office returns, Disneyland Paris saw record sales by charging higher hotel rates and opening a new Avengers attraction. Now, Adrian, I don't know when you last went to a Disney park, but they are not cheap. Ticket prices alone are astronomical, but even then when you get into the park, everything is crazy expensive. The food, the t-shirts, everything. On top of that, the quality of their movies has declined, at least in my opinion, and they really seem to be coasting off of nostalgia with all of these sequels that they're putting out. And even now, there are calls to boycott the latest Marvel movie. Do you think the workers have a shot here? I, I do think that the workers have a shot. In part, that's because you have a coalition of unions partnering, coming together. There's a lot of strength, a lot of force there. The employment contract that Disney had with these employees, that ended in June. And so people are in a situation now where they don't have to continue to abide by Disney's uh, you know, preference that they continue to work. And when it comes to work, Disney has not seen a strike at Disneyland in some 40 years. Right. That's when the last stage walkout was, and that lasted 22 days. 
Right now, Disney brings in about uh, five and a half million per day. So if this potential walkout is anything like the last, it's going to cost them an astronomical amount of money. So I think that the coalition of unions has a strong bargaining position right now. Yeah, I, I think it, it's interesting that they've been working on these negotiations for so long and it's gotten them nowhere. So I don't really know what Disney's plan is. They can't run that park without those workers, without what 14,000 workers. I don't know what their plan is. They're gonna lose a lot of money unless they are just kind of banking on their other properties, Marvel, you know, what is it, Star Wars, Pixar, all those other things, all their other parks maybe to make up the difference. But either way, overall, it's so much easier to just treat your workers better. Just pay them a little bit more. You have the money to do it and they're gonna be more loyal to you. They're gonna work better for you. They're not gonna fight you all the time. It's just better business practice to pay your workers better and treat them better. But that seems like such the bare minimum, but a lot of these big companies just don't want to do it. 